Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. Just a week in the life of a commercial gas engineer. Going to start with a Ideal Concord ES. It's a 408.9 kilowatt boiler that I was working on. There were three of them, but only one of the units were not firing. So I wanted to work out why. So I shut off the gas valve and did a drop test carried out the drop test from a local isolation. Once I was satisfied that the drop test was good, I reopened the gas supply and did a drop test whilst the gas valve was opening on the initial lighting of the boiler. Then I ended up with a pressure drop, so I could see the gas valve was opening. So I connected my spark plug connector, as you can see and it's sparking but despite gas going in and there being a spark it looked as though it wasn't lighting so i disconnected my union on my gas valve and obviously isolated the gas supply pulled the burner out it's not easy it does have some wheels but it's still not easy to put it out so wheeled it out and then cleaned down the burners this is it with um, i used some water on it to get down some of the dust and also um, just a light brush i also inspected the pilot assembly gave it a clean and made sure there was no blockage tipped the burner on its side and um, dried off a lot of the water and gave it a wipe down with a damp cloth. Inspected the spark and um, detection, which looked fairly new. Inspected my box over here, my spark generator, and the earth lead was um, damaged, so I did a, a reconnection there. Then I made an adjustment to my first stage, which is here. I, you have to remember, as I'm sure that you do, to be very precise when making adjustments to gas valves or making any sort of adjustments to gas appliances. It's good to use a pen and mark where you started off from and to make gradual increments, giving the flue gas analyzer a chance to pick it up and also even your um, manometer. So I put a mark on the gas valve. Um, you have to slacken off um, one of the screws first. So the screw can be found here at the front, just over here. And you don't want to um, take it out completely. Just enough so that you can make an adjustment over here on the first stage. Clockwise reduces the pressure and anti-clockwise increases. Once I was happy with my first stage burner pressure, which is here. It's supposed to be 5.8, but I was happy with 5.86. I moved on to my second stage. So I've done my low fire over here, just underneath here. So you can see there's a groove here on the unit where you can make an adjustment. And then over here, once the, the flathead screw is still stacked off, and then I started to either go anti-clockwise to increase or clockwise to decrease on my second stage here. And here you have it. Here's my second stage pressure. This is on the unit. It does say on the unit that it should be 11.8. To work out the to work out the first stage, you have to do 0.5 times 11.8. That is the high fire rate of the unit, or should I say the second stage? And then I then you come up with the 5.9. This is here in the manufacturer's instructions. You can find find this here. Then you, but you have to go to table one where it's got all the um, details of the um, high fire setting or second stage setting. So in the manual, it goes through the adjustment procedures such as here and then also over here for the second stage. So have a pause and read for that if you need to. On this particular unit, I just cleaned the the pilot assembly and then also the burners it was just a repair i was doing it wasn't a full service but um, in a full service it is good to take off the top and um, also give the unit a brush down through the boiler body 
Here's some further details on the stage the, or the operation principle of how the boiler goes through its um, sequence of operation. And also here is some further details as well as to what the display is about. The first and second stage is quite responsive and you can get it into the two different stages and it um, responds quite quickly. Okay, so I got that boiler on and had all three boilers um, lighting. The problem with this boiler, I, I don't know whether it was that the burner needed cleaning down or or um, if it was the pilot assembly, but when I swapped the pilot assembly round with another unit that was working, then my boiler, my faulty boiler decided to start working. And then the, the pilot, which I thought was faulty, that I put on the boiler that was working, that also worked. So basically I had only two boilers working and one not working when I arrived on site. And then when I'd finished, I had three operating. That was just by cleaning the burner out and um, swapping the the um, pilot assemblies round and i don't know if something wasn't connected properly like um, the earth connection wasn't on properly or one of these connections here one of these connections the spark or the detection or if the pilot tube had some block or if the unit just needed purging for a very very long time um, but nonetheless um, the units came on consecutively and I managed to test them all in high fire. Ended up with a working pressure of 27 millibar whilst all three units were working. So quite high um, working pressure there. Surprising though, as um, there was a note saying that there was inadequate gas pressure for these units whilst all were working. And nonetheless, I had 27 millibar when all three were running in high fire. So that, that was peculiar. On to a, another boiler. Um, we've got a new wave force draft burner here. On this force draft burner, um, you have to control the different stages, such as the initial stage and so on, from the um, particular unit. Um, this is just a little tour of the force draft burner for you to see it. So here's the display here. So on this new way burner, what you have to do is you have to hold in the symbol with the um, flame, so one, and also the symbol with the fan together you have to hold them both in at the same time and then once you hold them in at the same time you have to basically input the code that the manufacturers give you give you in order to get to what you want it doesn't show up with the numbers on there you just see as they go down you can you just count along and then once you get in to the unit you come up with the um, it goes for the different stages so this is the unit on and my combustion readings you also have to remember on the dials that if you don't turn up the dials for the stages the unit isn't going to come on and also you need to also turn on from your control panel as well so this is stage nine high fire so here here it's showing you the gas setting and then over here it's showing you the air setting and this is over here the stage that it is in stage nine which is high fire and if you want to make adjustments you have to hold for instance this is for gas and then and then you at the same time you'd have to go up or down to make adjustments to your gas input so for more air you'd click here and then simultaneously you would press down or up to increase your air and then you have to acknowledge acknowledge the change so you can see the um, head pressure there being 8.7 now stage one here by scrolling up or down it brings you to the other stage so this is stage one so this is low fire and it's showing me my gas settings here and also my um, air settings here and then I can also make adjustments again up here you can see the cold in order to get into the service mode here's my gauge connected to check pressure okay and here i am carrying out some work on an idle boiler this this unit had a um slight gas leak on it so i was checking the unit to see how much it was dropping by over a period of time 
the pressure hadn't dropped that much over two minutes. Nonetheless, I still changed the gas valve as that was the job in hand. This is the back connection. So you can see pressure is dropping, but ever so slightly. So um, I changed the gas valve because it had a um, slight leak on it as that was instructed by the um, previous engineer. But whilst carrying out checks on this gas valve, um, I did um, resistance checks to see the existing gas valve and the um, new gas valve to see the difference of the resistance. And as you can see here, so this is the um, old gas valve that I had 0.591. So I checked out my other test point on the gas valve and I had 5.23. And then I checked on my new gas valve and I had 0 0.575 or 0 0.576 rather. And then at my other test point, I had 5.01. So there wasn't really a big difference in the resistance. I think the existing gas valve was fine. I just think that the um, washers needed changing rather than the whole gas valve for the sake of the gas leak. And before I let you go, um, just to show you a few gems that I saw in Lidl's, they have some hammer drill sets, hammer drill bit sets for £9.99. They didn't have, there were certain sizes they didn't have, like I think they didn't have a 25mm um, connection there, but they had some other ones and I thought for £9.99 it didn't seem too bad. So these are the sizes they had here. So they had 22, 18, 16. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation sometimes when you need a bit in order to do a core drill of like an overflow pipe or so on and you don't have it. It can be a headache. So um, sometimes you have to bear a tenner just for one drill bit. But they seem to have um, some good drill bits in there. So um, that may be of some use to you. They had a socket set in there. I think it's just the socket set pieces, the 24 pieces. I don't think they've got much else to it other than that. They had a screwdriver set, a pretty basic one. I couldn't see myself buying that. They also had a hammer drill, a cheap one, £44.99. I don't know if I would buy that either. That seems like something for a DIY person. A cordless screwdriver with exchangeable attachments. Okay, I don't know if I would buy that either. Um, they had some basic mixer taps in there for £20. I don't know if you want to install that for a customer. Here it is in the flesh. Also kitchen tap for £24.99. And a cordless drill for £50. Okay, thank you for joining me. Bye, bye, bye.